to uh, the folks from the Ethics Commissioner's Office, Ms. Tremblay, Ms. Rushworth, thank you for being here. Um, is your office uh, at this time able to fully administer the Conflict of Interest Act? Thank you very much for that question. Uh, there's two parts to my response to that. There's absolutely certain things that we cannot do at this time. Those are things like post-employment waivers uh, for public office holders, um, administrative, ad administrative monetary penalties, and moving forward with investigations. On the other hand, what the office absolutely can do is continue to provide dedicated one-on-one -on -one advice to all of the regulatees who must remain in compliance with the Act and the Code, even in the absence of a commissioner. Yeah, and th that's uh, those ongoing um, uh, services that are being provided are, of course, uh, essential. Um, members right now are, are going through their um, annual uh, disclosure process, and so I know that um, I uh, appreciate and rely on the help of, uh, of the office. Um, so you said you're not able to initiate an investigation. Um, are you able to, in so are you able to initiate an investigation of your own volition, or are you not able to do it either by request by a member or um, on your own undertaking? The authority to initiate an investigation rests with the commissioner. Are you able to issue a report setting out uh, facts in question as well as your analysis and conclusions in relation to requests for investigation? That is not something we would be able to do because the analysis conclusions would rest with the commissioner. Are you able to refer uh, investigations or any findings of the office to the Speaker of the House of Commons at this time? I'm not aware of the uh, obligations in, in that respect, but I cannot imagine that we'd be able to do that without the Commissioner, but that would be a conversation we would have with the Speaker if the need arised. Are you able to summon witnesses requiring them to give evidence orally in writing um, on oath or if they're personal persons entitled to affirm in civil matters on affirmation and to produce any necessary documents or other materials that you consider necessary? Those types of uh, requests would be something that would be within an investigation process and that would be at the direction of the Commissioner. Okay. Um, so there is a, though there are a range of services that you're able to provide to members and uh, um, based on my, my experience you're doing so um, ably and, and as well as ever, there are, there, is a, uh, there are several functions of the office that are not able to be executed at this time due to the ongoing vacancy in the commissioner's position. Is that correct? That is correct, but I will say that any matter that is brought to the attention of a commissioner can be uh, looked at, any matter that is up to 10 years old can be looked at by the commissioner, and a commissioner has five years from the time with which that information became known to that person as the commissioner to act on it. So there'll be some, the, potentially there would be uh, work on the desk of an incoming commissioner. It, it, it doesn't stale date in, you know, in the intervening period. Correct. The same applies if there was something that uh, would be a decision to take on administrative monetary penalty, post-employment waivers, um, the ability to uh, reimburse uh, blind trust fees, that type of thing. All of those things would be held for the future commissioner. But for now... If I, as a member, referred an issue to you, or if uh, the experts in your office observed something that likely uh, was pers that that was viewed as a, a violation of the act, um, there would there would be no investigation initiated, and uh, and that essential transparency function for Canadians uh, would not be provided at this time. The ability to launch an investigation, a future commissioner has up to five years after the information is brought uh, forward to them to be able to do that. And in the interim, the office is absolutely still paying attention to the roles and responsibilities of all regulatees to follow both the Act and the Code. Take notes, keep receipts. Thanks very much. <laughs>